Yeah, so hi guys, um, I'm Matt Doherty. I'm currently working over in Belfast for AquaQ. And I'm going to give just a wee short talk, uh, short talk um, on sports torque. So it's basically the idea of putting some sort of framework on top of torque that we can do things with. So torque is like a kind of production framework for KDB. We're going to stick something on top of it to connect to real data. Um, obviously, there's lots of real data sources you might want to connect to in the real world. This one we're going to pick for this particular talk is Betfair data. So it's just something kind of fun. Um, and to be honest, the talk's mostly it's not going to be too serious. I'm just going to give you a quick intro to what it is, how it works, and then we're going to go through as many pretty pictures of data as I can squeeze in, basically. Um, so there's not going to be too much code, there's not going to be too many words. Um, so yeah, I'll just talk quickly about Torque. The idea of Torque Connect is wonderfully named idea for these connectors that are going to sit on top of Torque and connect into different data sources and give a demo of this Bedford Torque Connect. So this is something that's going to sit on top of it. It's all going to be free and open source. So 32-bit KDB is a free and open source. Torque is free and open source and currently on GitHub. And this Torque Connect package is not there yet, but it will be very soon. It's just currently sitting in a private repo. And then we're going to look through some pretty data and hopefully have some fun. So yeah, the idea, basic idea behind Torque. So it's like a uh, framework of a KDB production system. So you get um, an easily extensible, customizable system. You get process management, you get log management. Uh, gateway, discovery, monitor processes, load balancing, all these kind of things that most production setups have, but doesn't come with KDB as default. Um, if we sit this connector package on top of it, um, so it basically provides us with a feed handler that connects to the Betfair API NG. So this is like a lightweight JSON API that you can use for getting, um, for doing market navigation, for getting odds, and for placing bets on betfair.com. So if anyone doesn't know, it's like a sports exchange. So it's basically like a bookies, but um, you match with other users, so it's a market for gambling, essentially. Um, our feed handler retrieves the data using a custom Python script um, and pushes it into the Torque stack, so it'll work on either Linux or Windows. It handles authentication. Uh, data is pulled down, not pushed, so it's not a streaming uh, connection to Betfair. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they don't currently offer that, so you have to actually request data, and it's pulled down. Uh, it's parsed in the queue using .j.k. You can query as many markets as you like at custom intervals within the range of what Betfair will allow you to. So it's going to be limited by what they'll push to you. If you ask for every market in the world every half a second, they're probably going to tell you to go away. Um, it joins on appropriate metadata. And then as part of the gateway, we give you kind of like a basic suite of uh, API functions. So you can get the mid for any data you've collected, the spread, level two data, match prices, trading volume. And there's also something that's slightly less usual. So there's an active date caching system included in it. Um, this is something you don't normally need in KDB systems because most instruments you get every day. So like a stock, you get data for every day. Something like uh, a football match, if you're getting live odds, it only happens in one day in a two hour window. You don't want to be hitting a massive HDB, looking through like 100 different partitions, 500 different partitions for something that's only in one of them. If we just keep our record of where it is, um, it's much faster. So the system already has that built in. So yeah, we can capture live data and trades and codes. This would obviously be useful if you want to do like a sort of serious um, trading setup, if you want to do back testing, if you want to try to make money on this stuff, basically. Um, but it's also totally free for a standard personal account. So you don't have to pay anything to get access to the data from Betfair. You can get it up and running in about 30 minutes on Linux or Windows systems. I've been reliably told by two people, um, both of whom were experienced KDP developers, <coughs> but we'll just push that aside. So yeah. Uh, that's really all I want to talk about in terms of this. So I think now we're going to have a look at some data. Um, so um, on top of this stuff, I've used a, a JavaScript framework called d3.js. So you can build some nice sort of interactive front ends that will sit inside of web browsers. Unfortunately, you can't put HTML5 inside of PowerPoint, so we're kind of limited in terms of interactivity. Um, but all the images we've got here are kind of taken from that, and we've kind of tried to fake the interactivity as far as PowerPoint will let us. If you go on our site, you can see these nice interactive versions with a lot more a lot more movement and a lot more interactivity. So yeah, we can get down quotes data. Um, let's sort of explain what's going on here a little bit. This is uh, a Tottenham Arsenal game from about three months ago. Um, so from quotes data, we can get the mid. From mid, you can get implied probability. So we can see live throughout the game, the left-hand side of the graph is about the kickoff. The right-hand side is just after the full time. Uh, you can see in the middle, it goes flat for half time. And you can see pretty big jumps for all the goals. Um, <coughs> if you take a slice during the match, you can see uh, market depth. So you can see existing 
back in lay, so bids and asks, it's the bidding equivalent of bids and asks for Arsenal at that particular time. And then this kind of score bit beneath it, you can sort of see um, the score first of all, so the kind of red bars uh, is the score during that time, and then these little bubbles kind of represent events, so like goals scored, yellow cards, substitutions, this sort of thing. <coughs> and then you also get trades data, um, so it might not look like it, but actually the top graph shifts slightly. If we go back, you can just about see a very small shift. So the top data now is from trades data, so it's implied probability based on actual match trades as opposed to um, the mid price. And on the bottom we can see the volume per minute, so you can see pretty big spikes associated with goals. Um, and then if we zoom in on this stuff, yeah, you can sort of see there's a goal there. The market has a massive shift. Basically it doesn't care about anything else, moves to the next goal, has a big shift. Doesn't care about anything else. Uh, and yeah, just demonstrate it. So there's a yellow card. There's basically zero market response to a yellow card. It's kind of interesting. Um, at half time, it goes completely flat. And then throughout the match, you've kind of got this like continual movement just based on the time left. And for contrast, there's what a really boring match looks like. <laughs> um, so yeah, what makes a good game? I'm going to put a little tiny bit of KDB in here. So this is a couple of uh, snapshots of matches from the Six Nations about three months ago. So Italy versus Wales, England versus France, and us versus Wales as well. Um, so just looking at this stuff, the first game, Italy versus Wales, at the start, everyone thought Wales were going to win. Wales won. It's not a particularly exciting game. England versus France. Um, at the start, England were heavy favourites, but the French, just before half time, put on a bit of a show. So you can sort of see the odds spike down in the middle, and then England end up winning anyway. And the uh, Wales Ireland game kind of stays around 50% for most of it, and there's a good bit of jumping up and down. So, like, how can you quantify this kind of thing? So, <laughs> here is the formula for hotness, which is, uh, in fact, not my formula. So, it's taken from this website, the Gamletron 2000, if anyone's interested. Um, so, basically, what it says is if you take the chance of a given outcome at a given time and the chance of the same outcome two minutes ago, uh, sum all that throughout the game, square it. And then adding these two constants, so t is the constant for the length of the game or the length of the event, and k is just the scaling constant to make it a sensible number. Um, you can write that not exactly, it's not exactly the same thing, this formula in KDB, but it's effectively the same thing. Um, and then we can just use the get mid function, which is part of the API. It comes with this, this kind of talk connect package. And inside of the arguments of get mid, we put in things like, you know, um, What's, which match do we want to do it for, what are the start and end times, which market, that sort of stuff. So it kind of hides away that sort of logic and we can just do a nice clean KDB function. And yeah, Italy versus Wales, it's 1.73. England versus France is 10. Uh, Wales versus Ireland is 15. So not surprisingly, it's the most interesting. Uh, another cool thing we can look at with this stuff, so Six Nations data. You can do correlations between data. Um, so obviously everything I've shown so far is just like a single market. This is the Six Nations, the entire championship. So instead of the time axis being like two hours, it's about a month and a half. Um, with data collected continuously and you can sort of see spikes at the weekend. So that's the whole market reacting to games. Um, you can look at the market reaction to Ireland versus France. So that match happens. There's a jump down just as you'd expect. England versus Ireland. Uh, there's a fairly big reaction in the overall win. I think maybe we'll just leave that one up there a bit. <laughs> Appreciate it. And then finally, there's uh, Wales versus Ireland. This one's kind of cool because you can see, although the Welsh won, there's basically no shift towards the Welsh in the overall odds. So this is kind of like a weird, the Welsh beat us and the English picked up all the extra probability to win. So this is mostly because of how the table was sitting at this particular time. And then as it happens, the final day of the Six Nations, everything went crazy, so if anyone can remember it, there was a lot of tries. <laughs> Things that were not expected to happen, happened. So yeah, it'll be Wales by a lot of points. And as you can sort of see, the Welsh probability at the start of the day, so this is just the final day of the Six Nations, stays flat, and then rockets down as they score try after try after try. Um, then we play and do exactly the same with the Scots, so the, the green <laughs> starts to overwhelm the bar at the top. Uh, and England versus France, so there's a lot of noise as this game is just back and forward and back and forward and eventually everything turns green. 
So there's not just sports in this stuff, so there's another thing that's kind of cool that we happen to collect. So this is the general election day. Um, so the time scale on the bottom for reference starts at about 9 a.m. in the morning, so pretty much the start of polling. Um, the massive spike in the middle that you can see is when the polls closed. So this is, if anything, a fantastic ad for why we have laws in this country that say you can't talk about polling until the polls are closed, because there's an enormous shift in the market exactly when what those polls are announced. Um, yeah, obviously, no one expected the Tories to get his, uh, well, the result to go the way it did. In fact, even during the day, you can see there's a slight shift towards the red, some sort of a Labour government. It's only small, but it's definitely there. Um, and then throughout the night, as different results get announced, you can see stuff move, so that's the kind of first marginal seat gets announced. You can see a big move towards the Conservatives, a big move away from the Lib Dems, any sort of coalition involving them, and there's more seats get announced. And then uh, from about 6 o'clock on, everything starts to go very dark blue. So yeah, that's about all for me. Uh, I'm going to finish with a quick thing, try to get you guys to guess some of this stuff. I think it's kind of cool, in that, like, unlike financial data, like this stuff, so if anyone wants to throw a guess as to which one of those is which, one of them is an exchange rate, euros against dollars, one of them is an Apple stock price for, I think, the 7th of March this year. Anybody want to guess? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, you can't tell. Like, if, unless there's something specific that's happened during the day, then you know exactly what it is. I mean, most stocks and exchange rates and financial data in general looks very similar. Sports data, I think, is kind of cool in that sports are kind of predictable, like there's certain events happen every time, markets for sports always move in exactly well, not exactly the same way, but in slightly predictable ways. So I think it's reasonable you can make a guess. Does anyone want to guess at what that is? I think a couple of things that are useful is the number of outcomes there are. So there's only two outcomes there. Uh, someone pointed out to me quite recently the time on that one is actually a bit of a giveaway as well. So what sport only has two outcomes and what happened at that kind of time? Tennis. Tennis is a good guess, it's not tennis. Sorry? Super Bowl? It is indeed the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, it's the Super Bowl. Uh, another giveaway is that there's a big flat bit in the middle, which is particularly long because it's the halftime show for the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to guess that one? So there's a bit more movement in it, although it looks kind of similar to the last one. There's three outcomes this time, <coughs> rather than just two, so there can be a draw. Anybody want to have a go? Cricket? It's not about guests, it's not cricket, no. Anybody else? This? No, we can have a draw on tennis. Sorry? No, no, it's not Gaelic. It's a, it's a sport that's been mentioned in this talk already. It's rugby. Yeah, it's rugby, yeah. And to continue the theme of Irish rugby victories, it's a sport <laughs> 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 Australians in the Autumn Internationals last year. So one more. Um, so this one, there's not a huge amount of movement. There's more than there is in football, but it's, there's still like little events, and then there's like two pretty big ones. There's only two outcomes. This is tennis. Yeah. So it's a Djokovic versus Federer match from, it wasn't from one of the majors, it was from one of the minor tournaments at the start of the year. One kind of cool thing about it you can see is that the market moves on the break, not on the set. So the set gets one at that second bubble just after that, but the move is actually on the break. So as soon as the break happens, the market assumes the set is one. Yeah. Yeah, that's about all for me. So I think this framework should be up on our GitHub within the next maybe month or two. It's not there yet, but hopefully it should. And most of this stuff, not all of it, is up on our blog in the form of fairly nice interactive little visualizations. So yeah. Thanks, and if anyone's asked me any questions. You made any money on you? <laughs> no. <laughs> if I made money, I wouldn't be demonstrating it. <laughs> <laughs> is, it is the Betfair connectivity included in the framework as well? Yeah. Yeah, it's all. Have, have yeah. you explored any other exchanges like Matchbook or trying to do arbitrage between? I haven't looked at it no. I mean, I guess the idea yeah, of these kind of packages is just something you can sort of sit on top of Torque easily and connect to something. So yeah, I mean, I guess we could design one for another sports exchange, but no, I haven't done it. No. Yeah, okay. That's all for you Okay, that's it. Um,
the EC came on about halfway through, so there were people passing out. But uh, there's, as usual, there's refreshments in the, in the back, complimentary. Um, that's about it. Thanks, Bert.